Hello, dear listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Generative History. I'm your host, Alex Integras, your humble guide through the convoluted labyrinth of our collective past, exploring the fascinating corners of history that often go unnoticed. Today, we're trading the dusty pages of traditional history for a more electric, digital narrative. That's right, we're heading into the vibrant world of video games. We're going to revisit the colorful landscapes, the spine-chilling boss fights, the rush of adrenaline when you hear that iconic Sega startup chime, and the feeling of triumph when you make it through another level with just one ring to spare. In this episode, we're diving into the high-speed, loop-de-looping, gold-ring-collecting world of one of gaming's most iconic figures, Sonic the Hedgehog. Created by the Japanese company Sega, Sonic has been a stalwart of the gaming scene since his creation in 1991. Bursting onto the scene with his signature blue spikes and supersonic speed, he quickly sped his way into the hearts of gamers all over the world. Sonic the Hedgehog was born out of the need for a figurehead, a champion to bear the Sega flag into the rising battle of the gaming industry. Sega sought to compete with Nintendo's mustachioed plumber, Mario, who had revolutionized the video gaming industry. They wanted more than just a game, they needed a character, a symbol that would echo Sega's ethos of innovation, speed, and dynamism. Enter Sonic, a hedgehog with an attitude and speed that would make a Ferrari blush. Sonic was the embodiment of the 90-second zeitgeist, fast, edgy, and effortlessly cool. With his high-speed gameplay, he brought a fresh take to the platformer genre, straying from the careful jumps and patient progress typical of platformers to an adrenaline-filled sprint to the finish line. His gameplay, combined with his attitude, made Sonic an instant hit, not just as a game, but as a cultural phenomenon. Sonic wasn't just a hedgehog that could run fast, he became a symbol for an entire generation. He was a testament to the thrill of speed, the joy of letting go, and simply seeing how fast you could go. In many ways, Sonic's speed and rebellious spirit were reflections of the changing times, of the quickening pace of life and the yearning for new, faster experiences. Sonic's influence stretched far beyond just the gaming world. He inspired animated series, comic books, and even a Hollywood movie. He became the face of Sega and continues to be one of the most recognizable characters in video game history, transcending the boundary between game and gamer. In today's episode, we'll be journeying through Sonic's high-speed history, from his birth during an internal Sega competition to his transition into the world of 3D gaming and beyond. We'll delve into the highs and lows, the triumphs and tribulations, and the sheer determination that kept Sonic running even when the road got tough. So, grab your controller, press the start button, and let's sprint into the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic's story begins not in the lush landscapes of Green Hill Zone, but in the corporate boardrooms of Sega. The year was 1990, and Sega was finding itself in a rather unenviable position. Nintendo, with its charismatic Italian plumber, was leading the charge in the video game market, and Sega knew it needed to retaliate. Mario was not just a character, he was a symbol, an emblem of Nintendo's brand. His success had catapulted Nintendo to the front lines of the gaming industry, and Sega understood they needed a character that could match, or even surpass, Mario's appeal. In a move that can only be described as corporate bravery, Sega decided to host an internal competition. The goal was simple, design a character that could serve as Sega's new mascot, a character that could rival Mario. The competition was fierce, with designs ranging from rabbits to bulldogs, from chickens to, believe it or not, an overweight Theodore Roosevelt lookalike in pajamas. But amidst this zoo of ideas, one creature stood out, a spiky blue hedgehog. Now, you might be wondering, why a hedgehog? Why not something a bit more intimidating, like a lion, or something more endearing, like a puppy? The idea came from Naoto Oshima, an artist and designer at Sega. Oshima was intrigued by the concept of a character who could curl into a ball and attack enemies by simply rolling into them, a concept that would ultimately become Sonic's signature spin attack. This concept, Oshima decided, would work perfectly with a hedgehog. But why the color blue, you might ask? Why not a more traditional hedgehog color, like brown? Well, there are a few reasons behind this. Firstly, Sega's logo was blue, and having a mascot that matched would create a sense of brand synergy. Moreover, the color blue was chosen for reasons tied to the game design and hardware limitations. Early consoles had limited color palettes, and it was important to select a color that would stand out against the varied backgrounds. Blue worked well, contrasting nicely with the green grass of the Green Hill Zone, the first level of the game, and the warm tones of the Badnik enemies. Sonic's name also has an interesting origin. Initially, he was codenamed Mr. Needle Mouse, which was a literal translation of Haranzumi, the Japanese word for hedgehog. However, as development progressed, the team felt they needed a name that could encapsulate Sonic's most defining trait, his speed. After brainstorming, they finally settled on Sonic, a term associated with speed and sound barriers, which resonated perfectly with the character's high-speed gameplay. 
and thus Sonic the Hedgehog was born, a character designed to encapsulate speed, attitude, and innovation, values that Sega wished to associate with its brand. From his iconic spin attack to his vivid blue color, Sonic was a character unlike any other, a character that promised a gaming experience that was thrilling, fast-paced, and utterly addictive. In many ways, Sonic's creation marked the start of a new era in gaming, an era that put character and speed at the forefront. However, Sonic's journey was just beginning. His creation marked the first step in an odyssey filled with high-speed adventures, daunting challenges, and numerous ups and downs. Join me after the break as we delve into the world of Sonic's first video game, exploring its development, its gameplay, and its cultural impact. Welcome back, listeners. Let's dive right back into our exploration of Sonic the Hedgehog's history. We've just looked at how Sonic was born out of a design competition at Sega, aiming to compete with Nintendo's Mario. But Sonic's story doesn't end there, far from it. The creation of Sonic was just the beginning, a prelude to an epic saga of gaming history that continues to this day. So, Sonic had been designed, his iconic blue color chosen, and his name selected to resonate with his speed. But creating a character was one thing, crafting a game around him was another. Sonic's development was as much about innovation as it was about rivalry, and his first game, Sonic the Hedgehog, was a testament to that. The development team, later known as Sonic Team, comprised of several talented individuals. It included Yuji Naka, the lead programmer whose innovative algorithms allowed Sonic's high-speed movements, Naoto Oshin, the character designer who gave Sonic his distinctive look, and Hirokazu Yasuhara, who served as the game planner and level designer. Their task was not an easy one. Sega didn't just want a game, they wanted a game that could challenge the platformer king, Mario. That meant creating something that was not only fun to play but also groundbreaking in its mechanics and design. The team decided that speed would be the heart and soul of the game. It was a daring choice, as no other platformer at that time had emphasized speed as a key mechanic. Most platformers were about careful navigation, about taking your time to traverse the landscape and deal with enemies. Sonic, however, was all about rushing through the levels at breakneck speeds, all while collecting rings and fighting off the evil Dr. Robotnik's minions. The emphasis on speed came with its own set of challenges. Early tests showed that players would often lose track of Sonic due to his fast movement, leading to confusion and disorientation. To remedy this, Naka developed a revolutionary camera system that could keep up with Sonic's high speeds, ensuring the player always knew where Sonic was on the screen. Another key component of Sonic's gameplay was its ring system. Instead of a traditional health bar, Sonic would collect rings throughout the levels. As long as he had at least one ring, he could survive enemy attacks, but getting hit would cause him to lose all his rings. This system added a unique layer of tension to the gameplay, making every ring a precious lifeline. When Sonic the Hedgehog was released in June 1991, it was an instant success. The game was praised for its vibrant visuals, infectious music, and, of course, its high-speed gameplay. It was a breath of fresh air in a market dominated by slower, more methodical platformers, and gamers embraced it with open arms. Critics were similarly enamored, lauding the game's innovative design and thrilling pace. Sega's gamble had paid off, they had created a game that could not only stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mario but could also challenge the very conventions of what a platformer could be. Sonic the Hedgehog was more than just a commercial success, it was a cultural phenomenon. Sonic's image was everywhere, from t-shirts to lunch boxes, from TV shows to comic books. He became a symbol of the 90 seconds gaming scene, an embodiment of the era's love for speed, attitude, and rebellion. But perhaps Sonic's greatest achievement was how he redefined the platformer genre. His emphasis on speed, his unique ring mechanic, his innovative camera system, all these elements challenged the norms and pushed the boundaries of what a platformer could be. They introduced a new way to experience platform games, a way that was faster, more exciting, and more dynamic. The success of Sonic the Hedgehog marked a turning point in Sega's history, establishing them as a serious contender in the gaming industry. But more than that, it marked the birth of a new icon, a new hero who would continue to push the boundaries of speed and gameplay for decades to come. Join us after the Welcome Back. Let's pick up where we left off. Sonic the Hedgehog had made a groundbreaking debut in 1991, setting new standards for the platformer genre. But that was just the beginning. The blue blur was far from finished, and his next adventure was just around the corner. Hot on the heels of the resounding success of the first game, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 hit the shelves in 1992, a little over a year after its predecessor. The pressure was on for Sega and Sonic Team. They had to follow up on a groundbreaking game that had sent shockwaves through the industry. One of the biggest additions to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was the introduction of a new character, Miles Tails Prower, a two-tailed fox who could fly short distances. The creation of Tails was intended to provide a foil to Sonic's speed and attitude, offering a character that was more lighthearted and approachable. The character was a result of another internal competition at Sega, much like the one that had brought Sonic to life. 
Yasushi Yamaguchi, who had joined the Sonic team as a designer, won with his dual-tailed fox. The name Miles Prower, a playful pun on miles per hour, was chosen to stick with the theme of speed. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 also brought new developments in terms of gameplay. The game introduced the Spin Dash, a move that allowed Sonic to rev up and burst forward at high speed. This feature added a whole new dynamic to the gameplay, allowing players to overcome obstacles and enemies in a fun, satisfying manner. Also new to the game was the option for two-player cooperative gameplay, with one player controlling Sonic and the other controlling Tails. This addition added a social element to the game, which was mostly a solo experience in the first installment. The game's development process was a massive undertaking. The team was expanded, and development was split between Japan and America, which had its share of challenges. The team had to navigate time zone differences, language barriers, and distinct work cultures. However, the passion for creating a worthy sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog was a common language that everyone understood. Their efforts resulted in a game that built upon the successful foundation of the original, while introducing new elements that kept the experience fresh and engaging. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was met with immense success upon its release. Critics lauded its refined gameplay mechanics, stunning visuals, and the addition of cooperative play. Gamers around the world eagerly jumped at the chance to reunite with the Blue Speedster and his new sidekick. The game's release wasn't just an event, it was a global phenomenon, dubbed Sonic 2 S Day, as it was launched worldwide on a Tuesday, a rarity at the time. This marketing strategy contributed to the game's enormous success and set a precedent for future global game launches. The cultural impact of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was massive. The game cemented Sonic's status as a pop culture icon and introduced another beloved character in Tails. The game's signature high-speed platforming and memorable level design have remained influential, shaping the direction of platforming games to come. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 wasn't just a game, it was a statement. It was Sega saying, we're here to stay, we're here to innovate, and indeed they did. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 managed to capture the lightning speed of its predecessor and push it even further, creating a game that was not just faster, but also richer, more varied, and even more fun. With the release and success of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sega was not just a contender in the gaming industry anymore, they were a force to be reckoned with. And at the heart of it all was Sonic, the blue blur that just wouldn't stop. Join me after the break as we delve into the 3D era of Sonic and explore how Sega navigated this massive shift in the gaming landscape. Welcome back, listeners. We've journeyed through the genesis of Sonic, experienced his debut game's groundbreaking success, and explored the innovations of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But as we move towards the mid-90 seconds, the world of video games was set to take a massive leap into the third dimension. Stay tuned as we find out how Sonic made this transition. Welcome back, folks. Now, let's turn the pages of time to 1994, an interesting period for Sonic. We got not one, but two releases that year, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. These two games represent an ambitious project that had to overcome unexpected obstacles, leading to a unique chapter in Sonic's history. Originally, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles were meant to be a single game. However, during development, the Sonic team realized that the scope of the project was simply too large to fit onto a single Genesis cartridge. Sega, unwilling to compromise on the grand vision for the game, made a rather unconventional decision to split the game into two separate cartridges. But there was a catch, a creative twist that only Sega could come up with. Sonic and Knuckles came with a lock-on technology, a slot on top of the cartridge that allowed players to plug in Sonic 3. This innovative feature combined the two games into one continuous experience, just as originally envisioned by the developers. Now, let's delve into the games themselves. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, released in February 1994, introduced new elements to the franchise. It brought in new shields that granted Sonic special abilities, like the electric shield that could attract rings, or the fire shield that made Sonic immune to fire attacks. Sonic 3 also introduced a new character, Knuckles the Echidna, an antagonist tricked by Dr. Robotnik into fighting Sonic. Knuckles was a unique character, both a rival and a potential friend, who added a new layer of complexity to the game's narrative. When Sonic and Knuckles hit the stores later in October 1994, it was not just a sequel. It offered an expanded storyline and allowed players to control Knuckles, exploring new paths that were inaccessible to Sonic and Tails. This aspect added a layer of replayability that was not commonly seen in games of that era. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were praised for their innovative design, tight controls, and immersive levels. The splitting of the game into two parts didn't hinder their success, instead, it added to the allure. The ability to combine the two games was seen as groundbreaking, a testament to Sega's dedication to delivering the ultimate Sonic experience. 
but let's not forget the importance of these games in evolving the gameplay mechanics. The addition of special abilities through different shields, the expanded role of Tails, and the introduction of Knuckles as a playable character showed the evolution of Sonic games from fast-paced platformers to more nuanced and layered experiences. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles also set the standard for level design in Sonic games. Each level was distinct, filled with multiple paths, secret areas, and unique obstacles. This intricate level design, combined with the fast-paced gameplay, created a dynamic experience that kept players engaged and on their toes. The cultural impact of these games was significant. The release of two Sonic games in one year was a treat for gamers worldwide. Sonic was no longer just a video game character, he was a global icon, a symbol of speed, innovation, and high-quality gaming. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were instrumental in solidifying this status. Looking back, the decision to split Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles into two separate games, yet still provide a unified experience, can be seen as a bold and innovative move. It reflected Sega's commitment to their vision, their willingness to take risks, and their ability to turn challenges into opportunities. Stay with me after this short break as we delve into Sonic's transition to the third dimension. Welcome back to Generative History. We've been following Sonic's journey from his genesis to his leap into a split yet connected adventure in Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. Now, let's move forward to a pivotal point in Sonic's career as he made his transition into 3D. As the 90 seconds pushed forward, a new dimension was opening up in the world of gaming, both literally and figuratively. It was time to break the 2D barrier and dive headfirst into the third dimension. For our beloved Blue Hedgehog, this marked a period of transition, innovation, and yes, a fair share of challenges. Sega's first foray into the 3D world with Sonic was with Sonic 3D Blast, released in 1996. However, it was not quite the 3D experience fans were waiting for. The game was isometric, meaning it had a bird's eye view, but was designed to give an impression of 3D. Sega had taken a cautious first step into the third dimension, but it wasn't quite the leap fans were expecting. The game featured a pseudo-3D world with pre-rendered sprites, a departure from the familiar side-scrolling action. This new perspective was a mixed bag for Sonic enthusiasts. On one hand, it brought new gameplay elements like exploring larger areas and finding flickies, tiny bird creatures, to complete levels. On the other hand, some fans found the controls a bit cumbersome and the gameplay slower compared to earlier titles. Sonic 3D Blast was a brave attempt but it was clear that the journey to the third dimension wasn't going to be as smooth as Sonic's trademark spin dash. Fast forward to 1998, and Sonic made his full 3D debut with Sonic Adventure on the Sega Dreamcast. This was a Sonic game like no other, with expansive 3D worlds, multiple playable characters, and a storyline that dove deeper into Sonic's universe than ever before. Sonic Adventure received critical acclaim for its graphics, adventurous gameplay, and the sheer thrill of seeing Sonic in a 3D environment but it also faced criticism for some control issues and camera angles, common pitfalls in many early 3D games. The transition into 3D for Sonic was, in many ways, symbolic of the broader shifts occurring in the gaming industry. This was a period of experimentation and discovery, and like any pioneer, Sonic was bound to face obstacles and stumble a bit. Despite these challenges, Sonic's venture into 3D was an important milestone in the gaming world. It showed the potential of platform games in a 3D environment and set the stage for future titles. It was also a testament to Sega's commitment to innovate and adapt, always striving to keep Sonic at the forefront of gaming evolution. The cultural impact of Sonic's transition into 3D was significant. It was a time of excitement, anticipation, and discussion among fans and critics alike. Sonic's move to 3D stirred up debates about the future of the franchise, the challenges of 3D gaming, and the evolution of video games as a whole. The reaction of the fanbase was mixed. Some embraced the change, fascinated by the new possibilities that 3D gaming offered. Others felt a sense of nostalgia for the simplicity and purity of the 2D games, a testament to the impact the original games had on players. In the end, whether you love the 3D games or yearn for the simplicity of the 2D era, it's undeniable that Sonic's transition into 3D was a pivotal moment in gaming history. It marked a new chapter in Sonic's journey, one that saw him evolving and adapting to the changing landscape of video games. We'll take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll explore Sonic's transition into other media, from animated series to the big screen, and the iconic hedgehog's enduring influence on pop culture. Welcome back to Generative History. So far, we've followed Sonic's journey from his creation to his leap into the third dimension. 
Now let's expand our horizons beyond the gaming console as we look into Sonic's ventures into TV, movies, and his lasting influence on pop culture. With Sonic's initial forays into 3D behind us, it's time to plunge headlong into the era of Sonic Adventure, a series that truly represents Sonic's full transition into the 3D gaming world. Strap in, listeners, because this is one adventure that's not short on twists and turns. Sonic Adventure was developed for Sega's then new Dreamcast console. It represented a paradigm shift for the franchise in terms of both gameplay and storytelling. The decision to go fully 3D wasn't taken lightly. It required significant technological upgrades, shifts in game design, and a whole new approach to storytelling. Sega took the opportunity to experiment with more complex storylines and deeper character development. It introduced six playable characters, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy Rose, Big the Cat, and E-102 Gamma, each with their own unique storylines that intertwined into a larger narrative. Sonic was the fastest, of course, with high-speed action stages. Tails' stages revolved around racing, while Knuckles involved treasure hunting. Amy's stages were more puzzle-oriented, while Big the Cat's revolved around, of all things, fishing. Lastly, E-102 Gamma's stages were based on timed shooting. This diversity in gameplay mechanics offered something for everyone and showed Sega's determination to innovate. But it wasn't without its critics. Some fans loved the diversity, while others felt it diluted the essence of Sonic's speedy gameplay. Sonic Adventure wasn't just about running fast. It added a significant exploration element to the game. Adventure fields, non-linear areas that connected the action stages, allowed for interactions with non-playable characters and exploration at the player's own pace. Sonic Adventure also introduced the KO, adorable little creatures you could raise, akin to a virtual pet. They could be nurtured, trained, and even entered into races. This side feature became a beloved staple for many Sonic fans. Upon its release in 1998, Sonic Adventure was greeted with mostly positive reviews. Critics praised the game's graphics, expansive stages, and diversity in gameplay. The game was criticized for some control issues and camera problems, but it was largely seen as a successful transition into 3D. The cultural impact of Sonic Adventure was significant. It ushered in a new era for Sonic games, setting the tone for future 3D Sonic titles. The game's approach to narrative and character development marked a maturity in Sonic's storyline, influencing other platformer games that followed. The game's impact was also evident in the fan community. Sonic Adventure marked a new generation of Sonic fans who embraced the more complex storytelling, the broader cast of characters, and the fully 3D world that Sega had created. Sonic Adventure 2, released in 2001, built upon the foundation of its predecessor, streamlining the gameplay, improving controls, and delivering a more cinematic story. It introduced Shadow the Hedgehog and Ruse the Bat, characters who have since become central figures in the Sonic universe. Sonic Adventure 2 was divided into hero and dark storylines, each with unique levels and narratives. This approach to storytelling brought a new layer of depth to the franchise, further solidifying Sonic's status as a narrative-driven series. The adventure series' legacy lies in its ambitious attempt to redefine Sonic for a new generation and a new dimension. It represents Sega's willingness to evolve, innovate, and take risks even when the path was fraught with challenges. Join me after the break as we continue our exploration of Sonic's influence beyond the confines of the gaming world. There's plenty more ground to cover in this Blue Blur's speedy history. Welcome back to Generative History, where we're tracing the trajectory of Sonic the Hedgehog. We've covered his genesis, his evolution in the 2D era, his leap into 3D, and his adventure series. Now, let's jump into Sonic's journey beyond video games and into the broader landscape of pop culture. Ah, the 2000 seconds. A time of flip phones, Y2K panic, and low-rise jeans. In the world of Sonic, it was a period of experimentation, exploration, and yes, some rather memorable missteps. The 2000 seconds saw a wide range of Sonic games, from mainline titles to spin-offs, each trying to carve out its own niche in the gaming landscape. Let's dive in, starting on a high note with the Sonic Advance series. The Sonic Advance trilogy, released for the Game Boy Advance between 2001 and 2004, was a return to Sonic's roots. It revived the traditional side-scrolling gameplay, but added modern twists. Multiple playable characters, a variety of routes through levels, and even a multiplayer mode all made it into these handheld gems. Critics and fans alike praised the Advance series for its successful blending of classic and modern Sonic elements. For those fans yearning for that nostalgic taste of Sonic's 2D origins, these games were like a chili dog for the soul. However, as we all know, life and the history of video games is filled with peaks and valleys. And one of Sonic's most notable valleys came in 2006. Released to coincide with Sonic's 15th anniversary, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, or Sonic 6 as it's often called, was intended to be a reboot of the franchise, a game that would propel Sonic into the next generation of gaming. 
and well, let's just say things didn't go as planned. Sonic 6 was riddled with glitches, control issues, and an infamously convoluted and serious storyline involving time travel, a princess, and a strange romance that felt out of place in the normally vibrant and whimsical Sonic universe. Critics panned the game, with many calling it one of the worst games in the series. Despite the high expectations, Sonic 6 serves as a cautionary tale about the risks of rushed development and poor execution. That said, in a strange twist of fate, Sonic 6 has also developed a sort of cult status among the Sonic community. Its many flaws have made it a popular choice for speedrunners and streamers looking for a unique, and often hilarious, gaming experience. And then there were the spin-offs. Oh, the spin-offs. From Sonic Riders hoverboard races to Sonic Battles fighting game antics, the 2000 seconds saw Sonic try his gloved hand at just about everything. But among these spin-offs, the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic game series stands out. Who would have thought that one day we'd see Sonic and Mario, the once arch rivals of the console wars, competing in a friendly game of beach volleyball? The cultural impact of Sonic in the 2000 seconds is complex. It was an era of expansion and exploration for the franchise, a period where Sega was unafraid to take risks, to innovate, and to challenge what a Sonic game could be. The highs, like the Sonic Advance series, reminded us of why we fell in love with this speedy hedgehog in the first place. The lows, like Sonic 6, served as lessons in the challenges of game development. And through it all, Sonic's enduring popularity and influence remained. So, whether you loved the experimentation of the 2000 seconds or yearned for the simpler days of 2D platforming, there's no denying the significance of this era in Sonic's history. It's a testament to the franchise's resilience, adaptability, and unwavering ambition. Stick around after the break, because we're not done yet. Up next, we'll delve into the world of Sonic media, from animated TV shows to a full-blown Hollywood movie. And let me tell you, it's quite a ride. Welcome back to Generative History. Today, we're spinning through the world of Sonic the Hedgehog, and we've just covered his fast-paced journey through the 2000 seconds. Now, let's switch gears and explore Sonic's ventures into the world of TV and film. Buckle up, folks, because it's showtime. We've arrived at Sonic's most recent decade of history, and boy, it's been quite a ride. Sonic in the 2010 seconds has been all about nostalgia, reinvention, and even some silver screen stardom. Kicking off this era was Sonic Generations, released in 2011 for Sonic's 20th anniversary. Now, if you're going to celebrate a milestone, you might as well do it with a bang, and Sonic Generations certainly delivered. Sonic Generations was a celebration of Sonic's history, bringing together elements from across the franchise. In a narrative twist involving time travel, players could play as both classic Sonic from the original games and modern Sonic from the later 3D titles. Each stage in Sonic Generations was a reimagined level from previous Sonic games, offering two unique experiences. Classic Sonic tackled a 2D version with old-school platforming, while modern Sonic blazed through a 3D variant filled with speed and spectacle. It was a love letter to Sonic fans, a bridge between past and present. Critics praised Sonic Generations for its clever level design, its nostalgic charm, and its successful combination of old and new gameplay mechanics. But the celebration of the past didn't end with Sonic Generations. In 2017, we got Sonic Mania, a game that could be described as the ultimate tribute to classic Sonic. Developed by a team largely comprised of members from the Sonic fan community, Sonic Mania was a return to Sonic's 2D roots. It featured pixel art graphics, remixes of classic stages alongside brand new ones, and the return of the spin dash and drop dash moves. Sonic Mania was a smash hit, earning high praise from critics and fans alike. It was hailed as one of the best Sonic games in years, a testament to the enduring appeal of the Speedy Hedgehog's original 2D design. Now, let's talk about Sonic's foray into film. Released in 2020, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie was Sonic's first live-action adventure on the big screen. The movie saw Sonic, voiced by Ben Schwartz, teaming up with local Sheriff Tom Wachowski, played by James Marston, to take down the evil Dr. Robotnik, portrayed by none other than Jim Carrey. The film combined comedy, action, and heart in a story that explored Sonic's origins. The initial reveal of Sonic's design in the movie dot 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 well caused a bit of a stir, to say the least. Fan reactions were so strong that the film's producers decided to delay the movie in order to completely redesign Sonic. The final result was a Sonic that was much closer to his video game counterpart. This dedication to getting Sonic right was appreciated by fans and contributed to the film's success. The Sonic the Hedgehog movie was a hit at the box office and was well received by fans of the franchise. It was a testament to Sonic's enduring appeal and his transition from the gaming console to the movie theater. The world of Sonic the Hedgehog continues to expand, from video games to films and even a theme park attraction. It's been an incredible journey since that initial race across Green Hill Zone, but it's clear that Sonic's journey is far from over. So, what's next for our favorite blue blur? 
only time will tell. But one thing's for certain, wherever Sonic goes next, it's sure to be a fast-paced, thrilling ride. And we can't wait to see where that journey takes him. As we approach the final lap of our high-speed history tour, it's time to hit the brakes, look in the rearview mirror, and reflect on the thrilling journey we've just taken. So, let's do just that, let's talk about the legacy of Sonic the Hedgehog. From his first dash through Green Hill Zone in 1991 to his recent cinematic outings, Sonic's story is one of enduring appeal, innovative design, and a spirit of adventurous experimentation. It's a narrative marked by extreme highs and lows, by daring risks and triumphant returns. At his core, Sonic represents a unique brand of gaming, a blend of speed and platforming, of cool attitude and vibrant worlds that even after more than three decades, remains distinctly and undeniably Sonic. Over the years, the Sonic series has constantly reinvented itself. 2D to 3D, platforming to racing, console gaming to handheld adventures, and even a leap onto the big screen. Sonic has never been a franchise to rest on its laurels. Instead, it barrels forward, just like its titular hero, ever eager to explore uncharted territories. And what of Sonic's cultural impact? Sonic's influence on the gaming industry cannot be overstated. He helped define a generation of gaming during the 90 seconds console wars, his face is recognizable to many as Mario's. He has remained a symbol for Sega, a beloved character whose appeal transcends generations of gamers. Sonic's influence can be seen in many subsequent games that incorporate elements of speed and platforming, but his impact goes beyond the realm of video games. Sonic's speed, his style, his character design, these have become embedded in pop culture. Sonic memes, fan art, music remixes, and even fan-made games, the Blue Hedgehog's cultural footprint is vast. And despite the missteps along the way, the glitches of Sonic 6, the early design in the movie, Sonic has shown an ability to bounce back, to continue to engage audiences and maintain a loyal and passionate fan base. Looking at the franchise today, it's clear that Sonic's appeal endures. The success of Sonic Mania speaks to the ongoing love for Sonic's 2D roots. Sonic's transition to film has opened up new avenues for storytelling and character development, and the continued release of new games and content suggests a future full of potential. Ultimately, the legacy of Sonic the Hedgehog is a testament to the power of well-crafted characters, innovative gameplay, and the ability to adapt and grow. Through ups and downs, through shifts in gaming trends and audience expectations, Sonic has proven that, like his signature speed, his charm and appeal are unstoppable. And so, dear listeners, we've arrived at the end of our Sonic journey. But don't worry, there are still many more stories to tell, many more worlds to explore. In our next episode, we'll dive into the enigmatic world of Silent Hill. Prepare for a chilling journey into psychological horror, where nothing is as it seems, and every corner holds a new mystery. As always, thank you for joining me on this wild ride through the world of Sonic the Hedgehog. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. This is Generative History, signing off. Until next time, keep making history.